Welcome back to Living Authentically. Due to popular demand, we are back with my next guest, the face behind this show's theme song, Phil Ingstrom. Phil, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Gina. It's great to be here. Very excited and thank, thank you for uh, having me. I cannot stress enough how many people have written to us asking who wrote the song, Don't Worry About the Weather. So let's start with that. Can you tell us a little bit about the theme song? Sure. I wrote it, uh, I wrote it a while ago. Actually, I dedicated it to my brother who was uh, sick at the time uh, with leukemia. He's, uh, he's better now, um, hopefully cured. Um, awesome. But uh, it was really, if you uh, listen to the lyrics and so forth, it was, it's about hope. It's about, uh, again, not worrying about things. Um, yeah, too deeply and kind so of. So it's kind of a metaphor. Don't worry about the weather, but it's, it's not really about the weather. It, exactly, it it really is. And um, you know, it was also even though it's dedicated to my brother, it's also was a way for me to to cope um, with uh, you know the uncertainty um, and the fear of of him being sick also. Um, so it it meant a lot to me and still does and 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 always will. Well, thank you for giving us the privilege of having it as the show's theme song. Absolutely. We are extremely honored. So what inspired you to write the song? You said he was sick, but what inspired you to pick up the instrument, the guitar, whichever you wrote it with, and just go for it? Well, that's, uh, I, I, the guitar is my main instrument, the guitar and voice. And um, I've always um, uh, written songs uh, since um, early, you know, uh, early teenager. So it's been years. your passion for a while. It really has, and it's always um, felt natural to me. Um, I've always uh, been interested in it. I've always uh, kept up with it, especially on the songwriting part. I wasn't always the best about practicing, but on the songwriting, that's one of the most meaningful things to me, the popular song, getting uh, uh, a little joy or happiness or, or even some other emotions for three or four minutes. That's always meant a lot to me other people's music and then be able to to do that myself. So this is your passion and that's what this show is all about is living out your passion. So let's go with that. This is your road to authenticity. Can we start from maybe being in the corporate world and how you basically let your passion guide you through that? Absolutely. Uh, so I kind of stumbled into uh, the, the corporate world. I was a little um, uh, not unprepared, but a little uncertain about what I wanted to really do. I wasn't very focused on a, on a career. I loved music, but I was a little, uh, uh, I guess I, you could say fearful, a little cautious about doing that for a, a career. Um, in the academic world in music, um, it's, uh, it can be rewarding, but there's not an awful lot of, of money always. And, and that's where the fear stemmed from? I think so, you know, uh, uh, a lot of that. And, you know, I wasn't always again, passionate about that side of, of music. I was more interested in, um, rather than academic classical music, I was more, much more interested in, in popular music, um, the, what you'd hear on, the, on FM and AM radio um, and, and so forth. So, uh, but the corporate world, um, again, was provided a very good living uh, for me. So, and I was able to, to rise up, but it never felt right to me. I you know, it had, always had trouble picturing myself, oh, where am I going to be in 10 years or 15 years? It was always really tough to see myself um, that. So again, it really didn't feel what you'd say authentic to me. Now, a lot of people say when they're in that kind of job, they feel like they're just going through the motions in life, where instead, when you are living out your passion, you just feel like that's where you should be. Is that what you're trying to talk about exactly? That's exactly what happened. Wow. And you know, the opportunities um, just kind of lined up where it, uh, it made sense. I had a little downtime from work and um, started working on my music again and realized that this is really means so much to me. I started getting some feedback, you know, positive feedback and, and validation from others. And I go, you know, maybe I should, uh, you know, consider really doing, doing my passion rather than just keep it as a more of a hobby or something on the back burner, um, you know, dive into, uh, into, to see what can happen, take a chance. Now, are there family members who have supported you through this or anybody in particular that's really motivated you to put this to the forefront? Absolutely, I'd have to say my wife, Christine, has been um, instrumental uh, in doing that and she always has been. Um, I think when we, when we first met and started dating, um, she didn't even realize I, I played music, but- um, Really? Yeah, after, um, after a little while, um, 
she's a little more exposed to it. I did a, <laughs> I did a song I wrote uh, for her for our wedding and got some, some nice uh, feedback uh, on that song all too, also. So I, I think um, when she kind of really heard my background and, and, um, and my songs, the ones that I've written, she really took uh, the chance with me you know, kind of help steer me into uh, and support me and guide me into this uh, this new venture. See, that power of a support system, it's, it's just, it's great knowing that people are going to really encourage you and motivate you to just keep achieving your goal, no Absolutely. matter what it is. And make their own sacrifices and, and having somebody else trust in you means, means everything. Yes. Now, what about this transition from the corporate world to music? I read somewhere that you saw it as a risk. Can you talk more about that? Yes, I think, um, you know, as you establish your career in the corporate world, you are usually trying to, to move up um, and keep achieving. Uh, but I was just, again, never comfortable there, uh, never happy. I, had, I would take my, uh, you know, it was a stressful job. It's uh, corporate world is rarely nine to five. Of course. Um, yeah, and at five o'clock, I would have a lot of trouble turning it off. You know, I would still have work on my mind. And that, uh, I think, really burned me out. Um, I think I was burning out for an awful long time, not just the last few years, but before that. Uh, unhappy, you know, a bit depressed, and again, that's just because I knew it wasn't uh, it wasn't the right fit. Um, at least deep down, I knew that. Would you play music for fun in your spare time, or would you just kind of ignore that passion of yours? Well, I, I'd have to say that uh, it, I didn't totally ignore it, but I um, it didn't get the uh, attention or time it deserved, um, and I think that's be somewhat because, again, I I think uh, with myself, I would let the um, the after effects of the the work day um, invade into my evenings and my weekends, where I just didn't have the the passion or the um, the steam to or fulfillment to now. Yes, that too. So um, uh, I always kept up with songwriting. I would always uh, you know pick up my guitar and and keep writing songs. Um, I didn't necessarily finish them, but that always um, stayed with me. And at this point, I have a, a pretty good foundation of, of work to, to build off of. So I did keep that up, even though um, uh, I was working in the corporate world. And again, I was one of those people who had trouble balancing um, your, your work life. Of from course. Yeah, so. Of course. Now, could you shine some light on another song on your album? Absolutely. Um, my album is, uh, the title of it is My New Reality, and that's the first song. What a great title. Thank you. And what it really is about, it's, um, it's about uh, kind of realizing uh, where, you, where you are and, and what you're, uh, where you are in life, but also thinking about, um, well, uh, I'd like to make a, a change, you know, maybe life isn't exactly or my life isn't how I'm interpreting it, interpreting it. And it's all about kind of changing your point of view and um, and giving something else a try, kind of waking up and realizing, oh, maybe life is not a, how I've been interpreting it. So essentially you're taking a step back and you're reviewing your life and saying, what have I done and what can I do now? I think so. But also, again, putting a new spin on things. Nice. So often we you know, filter um, input and, uh, from the outside world, um, sometimes in a not such a positive way, sometimes in, in not really uh, in a realistic way. You know, we kind of skew these, uh, these messages we get and these stories that we make up in our own head. So it was kind of, the song is really about, hey, let's stop. And um, no, your, your life is really um, something else. Let's take a new, new viewpoint of it. And life is so short too. And we don't realize how time is so valuable. And I think you've realized that because you are putting your passion to the forefront and saying it's time to just really tackle this. Life is too short not to follow your passions. So at what age did you discover your treasure, your music? Well, I discovered I had a big love for it when I was around 10 years old. And that's when my 
father brought home a guitar and I picked it up right away and took a few lessons and uh, have always kept up with it. But at the same time, I discovered, uh, or I got more into, into popular music, what was on the radio. I discovered the Beatles, which uh, meant a lot to me um, and still, still do. But there's an awful lot of other artists, um, again, kind of grounded in, in classic uh, rock and roll music, classic, you know, melodic um, music um, that, uh, that was very popular in the in the 60s and 70s and, and still is today to, to some degree. Gotcha. And so I also read somewhere that you have a newfound confidence and you can clearly see that with the My New Reality title of the cover. So can you talk more about that, that confidence? Uh, sure. I think uh, it came from uh, me giving it my all, working very hard, um, working with others well. It's very high, hard to difficult, at least for me, to be objective about my own music, um, to, to really make the call, is this good, is this good enough? And by that I mean, do other people want to listen to it? Do I get enjoyment? And you're in a very vulnerable position too. Absolutely. You're talking about your emotions, you're letting people hear it. I mean, that's a hard spot to be in. Yes, I'm, I'm writing the songs and I'm performing, you know, uh, most of the instruments and uh, or a lot of them in, uh, in, in the case of, of this album and I'm doing the, the singing. So yeah, you are putting yourself out there and it is, um, a little, it's a little scary at time, but I think I was able to, to let go, um, and again, Good for uh, you. yeah, try to try to weigh the feedback and 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 filter it. But again, I did was getting some some good compliments back and some validation from other people in the industry, um, which uh, which really helped I think boost my confidence. And I think in the act of making the music, it just felt great. There was times where you, I just would finish writing a song or finish recording a part, and you know you'd feel some uh, a little bit of bliss there, um, like everything is, is right the in the world. Best feeling. It sure is. So where could people get this amazing album, My New Reality? Well, it's uh, available for download on iTunes and Amazon and CD Baby and in many other places. Uh, you can also. Uh, contact me on my website, which is uh, at philangstrom.com. Uh, my email address is philangstrom at gmail. And we'll definitely com. list information as well so people can contact you. Absolutely. So you can find out more about it, to, uh, more about it at, at all those places. Well, Phil, thank you so much for teaching us how to take your passion and really scale it out to not only help yourself, but other people. Thank you so much for having me. It was a uh, pleasure. We are so thrilled. So when we come back, I will be here to discuss all that we learned today and please stay tuned. Brought to you by Lester's Flower Shop. Located at 1250 El Camino Real in Colma, they're an all-occasion floral shop specializing in bridal work and events. Open seven days a week, family-owned, and serving since 1998. Their phone number is 650-758-2654. Their website is www.lestersflowerscolma.com. Lester's Flower Shop, a proud sponsor of Living Authentically with Gina Mazzetti.